So, where we left off last was putting the wrap on the top. Uh, so the wrap is all done. Came out really like stellar. I love the way it came out. And I'm very impressed with the product too. It actually it goes on really good. It's my first time doing a wrap. I really like it. Uh, okay, so what I've done in the meantime is just a couple little things. I mounted the motor on just so I can get an idea of with the hatch door where to cut my wire holes. Um, and this is going to be our battery connection. And that's pretty much it. So with the door covered, you know, we only have that coming out. Looks beautiful, nice and clean, nice and aerodynamic. I really like that. Um, I'll go over what I have inside of there again in a few minutes. But what I want to do right now is i um, going to show you how I mark and lay out for when we put our control horns on um, and our control links. We're going to do that right now. So the first thing I like to do is get an idea. We're going to be running these straight. So I need to get an idea of where to make my marks. I use this right angle and just butt it up against the servo horn and I look for a straight section that's part of the main you know um, airframe you could use a glue line from a blunt section you could use the, an outside edge if you wanted to but I usually do it like this it's easy so I'll just get an idea using that straight edge and then I'll actually make my mark using a straight edge that's a little more flexible <clears throat> and what I'm looking to do here, what I'm looking to do here is just, I want to mark it close to where the, I'm going to make a line and just mark close to where the hinge line is. Because our control horn needs to be up close to that hinge line so that we get the, the ball uh, directly over top of the hinge line so we can get even throw. So it's just the builder's kind of standard that you try to get those control horns as far up and close to that, that hinge line as possible. So let's go to the other side. Again, butt it up against the servo. Find a straight edge on the inside. Use the other flexible scale in order to find your mark. And all you're doing at this point, all you're doing at this point is just marking a little straight line. All right. For control horns, the kit comes with these really nice standoff type control horns. So these are what we're going to be mounting in here so that we can have control over that. The way I usually mark these, just so I know exactly where they go, is it has a top part and it has a little washer for the bottom that clamps from the bottom. I'll take that washer off and use that as my guide to where the hole's going to be. And I know that with the with the edge of this washer up against the hinge line it actually puts this um, attachment that's on top the, the black plastic attachment it actually is right in line with where the outside edge of this washer would be or the outside edge of this entire piece so I know if I just put this washer in that location looking at the line that I drew earlier I can just mark it here and know that that's going to be this eyelet that's on here is going to be directly over my hinge line so we'll just mark those and we'll drill them then I have another little secret that I'll share with you
make a bigger hole now. I drilled the holes to put in the control horns, but I don't want to leave them just like this um, raw wood. So what I usually do is take a little thin CA and wick it into the holes and use kind of a good amount. So put something underneath it so you just don't get that all over your work surface because I found it'll drip through. And we'll give it a bit of CA in there. And what that does is it wicks into all that balsa and makes it nice and hard right around that screw hole. And by doing that, when you go to put the bolt through and clamp everything together, it doesn't just crush the soft balsa. It actually has a hard balsa to bite into and keeps the control horn from coming loose in the future. Because if you don't do this over time, these will start to come loose from the compression of the, of the wood. And then you'll just keep tightening and tightening and it'll just keep crushing it till it, you know, it's totally no good. All right, so now that we've got that part done, we're going to go and take our screw and the washer and we're going to bring those up through the wood. Then we add a little Loctite. I use the paste. Just a little rub of Loctite. And then we can attach on our horn. All right, there we go. Got control links on. So now, these little black eyelets, I will tighten them down to right where the top of its, you know, screw starts to show through. I just put them to where they're generally flush with the top of the eyelet. And I'm doing that because I want them to be as long as possible. To be as long as possible so we can keep as much control resolution as possible. And what I mean by that is um, I want stick movements on my radio to be, you know, very, have a lot of resolution between the movement of the sticks. Uh, so the way that we do that is by going long, as long out as we can on the Elevon and as close in as we can on the servo horns. Um, so with this setup, it this works out perfect for setting our rates and our expo and having all the resolution we want to see. So now that I have these on here, we're going to use our control rods. So the remaining pieces that I have here are, I have some control rods that I've used. These are just 256 steel control rods, um, pieces that I had from before. I just found some of my scrap and made these up. But what I do is I buy some of these Great Plains links that you put on the end and it actually allows you to thread onto them. So you just solder these on. So you rough up the metal solder these on and now you have a control rod with a thread on one side so we'll be using a um a little control clevis one of these dubro control clevises on this side and then we'll use one of the dubro the easy connectors up here so that we're able to set this length here roughly and then we can fine tune the length by using the 
the screw adjustment out here. And these are nice and small, so it, again, it keeps it streamlined. I wanna keep everything as streamlined as possible because it is, after all, a race wing. So anything you can do to make it smooth in the air, which this right here means an awful lot about making it smooth the way the air flows over it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do our links. Then we're gonna put on our little easy link. And these are a little, little copper tube with a hole drilled through it, and it has a set screw that goes in on the side so it locks everything in place. So we'll add a little. little Loctite to it and just start those in. And you can use these links. You can use it on that side if you like. I usually like to, because I usually will use it up on the servo end because I don't want these to move around very much. And if I put them out on the Elevon, these thread on. I don't want these to start moving around on here because it doesn't have straight torque. So we're not gonna put them there, we're actually gonna put them up here. And you can choose to put them on the inside or the outside, doesn't matter. I'm choosing to put them on the outside. And you just press that through your hole. And then it has a little retainer, plastic retainer that goes on the back side, And you kinda press this on real good and it will clip into place and that holds on our control link part right there. All right, so now, now we can actually pop in our control link and I'll just find the hole here, slide this in, and then just put our end over. There's one link on. other link on good so there we go so now what I'll do is I'll I'm actually going to do a couple of things in order to find a pretty close point to what we're looking for as far as what the length how do I know how to set this length that's what the question is and the way that I usually do it is I'll try to bring I'm try to bring the servos so where the control horns are a nice let's see if the camera can get this. I'm looking at an imaginary plane on top of the servo, so a flat on top of the servo. I want the servo horn to be 90 degrees to this flat. So I want it straight up and down. In my radio, when I do the radio setup, I'm going to use sub trim in order to center these up because that's the center, that'll be the center of its throw from the, the motion of the servo. I want to have it so you have equal throw, one direction equal throw another. So I need to start in the middle. So I'm just gonna you know, manually put them in the middle. I've already centered them up for the servo horns earlier, but now I'm just gonna center them up for this particular step to get them as close as possible to being 90 degrees. So something just like that. And then I'm gonna move the Elevon to where I have just the hint, the slightest hint of reflex. And reflex is the amount of up that you have on your Elevon. Like if you look down the cord of this wing, you can tell that it has a little bit of up. If you look through the straight cord of the wing, you can see that it has a little bit of up here. That's called reflex. And wings need reflex in order to stabilize them and help them to fly straight and fly, actually. It needs a little bit. It needs to be just a touch nose up for it to fly. So we need to add a little up. So what I want to do, this right here is actually a little bit too much. I need to take a little bit out for where I'm going to do a start point. All right. So... I have it, we'll take a little more out. 
good. So that when I run my hand over it, I've kind of developed a feel for doing this. I'll run my hand over it and I can just get an idea, just a little bit of reflex, maybe, you know, three or four, maybe three or four millimeters off of, I don't know, maybe five millimeters off of what might be center line. And then I'll cinch this down and I'll also take my marker and I'll mark on both sides of this control rod so that I know if ever in a crash or it gets rough handled in the car or you know tossed down the steps by accident and it bumps it I'll know from these marks that I put on it whether it moved here it won't move here but I'll know if it moved here and I can always bring it back to the exact spot that it was before that happened all right so Let's make sure that's tight because we're just going to leave it there. And then what we're going to do is take the Dremel and just cut these off so it'll be nice and clean when we're done. So we'll give a little tension. And I'll move this again to where I have just the slightest bit of reflex. And that gives me a starting point. It's not going to be perfect, but it gives me a good starting point for when I go to fly. I usually know I've been able to get these pretty close with only a little bit of trimming right here on the bench. So I'm showing you my little secret. And there's our control rods installed. So you can see that our servos are going to work just fine. And that's about all the throw that we need when for this thing to fly. So that's going to come out really good. Okay, so I clipped off and trimmed off the control rods. So this is nice and done now. Just use the Dremel. Um, so all that's done. At this point, let's just dig into a little bit of electronics now. Because pretty much everything is on the wing. The last things we have to do are drop in the VTX and put our connector on and I'll show you how I want to do that because I, I usually am a little anal about that little OCD comes out when I do stuff like that. Um, all right, so let's take a second and go back inside. We talked about this in the very beginning when I built it, but I had pre-made up some of the electronics. So the ESC and I like to use an RROSD. So the RROSD is a nice little PDB that just allows me to be able to have my LC filtering. It allows me to have regulators so for both for both um, 5 volts or, 10, or 12 volts so I can run my camera and my VTX off of whichever voltages I want. I can even run full LiPo. But it's just a simple, nice PDB. Uh, it's one that I found that works very reliably as long as you wire it up right, and it's very simple. Uh, and the price is pretty low. There's other ones that are that mimic it on the market, and those are fine too. But I've just grown accustomed to using these, and they work great for me. Uh, so that allow that fits in there really nice and neat. My wires for my motor go through and uh, that's pretty much it. Our receiver's over here. Our VTX is gonna drop in here. Uh, so it, it's pretty much ready to go. We only have a couple more things to do and this is all gonna be done. So the first thing I wanna do, now that we have the links on and we have the motor in and connected, um, we have our camera and VTX lines i just don't want those to touch anything right now i'm going to power it up temporarily so i can one set the uh, motor direction and we can actually get our sub trim set and make sure our control surfaces look proper um, and uh, just make sure that that's all good and then we'll just wire in the camera we'll cut out and wire in for the camera and drop in the vtx and we just put on winglets so I'm going to go inside my radio and I'm going to look for my model. Actually, let's also make sure we're going to do an ESC calibration. So let me just connect up. <coughs> okay. 
Let's do this safely. Okay, so I found my model and I'm on. For ESC calibration, we go full stick and we arm the model with it at full stick. When we plug in, we're going to hear listen for tones. Wait till they stop and then go full down stick and wait for the tones. All right, so we're good to go. So now if I bring the throttle up, the motor should spin, all right? And right now I can tell it's spinning in the opposite, the wrong direction. So I'm gonna power it off and I'm just gonna swap two motor wires. Any two, doesn't matter which ones, just any two. And that should reverse our motor. And our motor's gonna be good now. So let's go back in and we're going to check our servos now. So up, down, right, and left. If you don't have the mapping right so that the control surfaces are working properly, then you'll have to go inside your radio and do those kind of those kind of items in order to set that properly. But our controls are working proper. Our mix is set right in the radio. So you can see everything has got its full control throw. But now, looking at my servos, I can see that they're not 90 degrees as they as I wanted them when I set up my control horns or when I made these control links. So because those aren't 90 degrees to each other anymore, I need to go inside of the radio and set my sub trims. And depending on where how I which servo I plugged into which input on my receiver determines, you know, which sub trim I have to do, but this is all regular radio stuff. Um, if you have somebody that's good at it, if you're not sure, if you have somebody that's good at it, just contact them and, you know, get their help in order to do this. But I'm going to show you real quick. And it's this one that's moving. So this is my channel one. And I'm going to adjust my sub trim till I get that servo to be 90 degrees to this surface. Okay, that one's perfect. So now let's go to the other one. And we're going to adjust it till we, we get what we're looking for. Okay, there we go. And we'll exit out of there as well. So now we've got our control surface. We've got a little bit of reflex in there. Should be really nice. And we have all of our servos working in the proper order. Okay, so next, next up, we are going to cut in for our camera. So for this wing, because of its low profile, um, and generally any wing that I've been building of late, I really, really like these run cam mi mini um, cameras because they're nice and small, compact, and once you cut them in, it maintains the streamline of the airframe. So we're going to drop this in here, and I need to make a, a little pocket so... We're just going to mark it out and then do our, just as we did previously, do a cut and then do a little bit of Dremel work and Dremel out to make our pocket nice and neat. And we're just going to get a rough idea here. <coughs> and then I will freehand. Okay, and just as before, 
I'm going to do our little layer cut this time. So I'm going to cut in. And this cut is usually pretty deep. You need to get down pretty deep because this camera you want to sit, want to have it really sit down in there. And we're going to cut it slightly smaller than our marks so that it's a tight squeeze. And I cut it back from the tip just so you have a little bit of impact protection. But we'll make a little divot here so you should be able to see out full width but have the camera drop down in there. So I need to clean this up by using our Dremel technique. So I'll just use it like a pencil and get inside of here and cut out the last little bits of foam and smooth this all out. Okay, so there we go. Camera's in nice and neat. Let's see, sits down in there very good. So just the connector back is up on top nice and flush and then I have one last little trick that I do is I'll again take our welders glue and I'll smear in welders glue in here and leave it sit overnight and what that does is it stiffens up with a little bit of a rubbery feel and so when I drop this in it'll be a nice squeaky fit squeaky tight fit and then I'll just put a little, small little piece of tape over top of it just to make sure if it ever takes a hit it's not going to just fly out but it's going to be held in there really well I choose not to glue in cameras anymore I stop doing that altogether because um, what would happen is you damage a lens or you damage the camera itself and you go to take it out and it's virtually impossible if you have it glued in place um, and if you do get it out, you'll rip up all the foam around it just trying to get it out of there. So I always, now I always just cover this, make our pocket, cover it with welders, let it sit overnight. When it's dry, I can just press, press fit in my camera, run a piece of tape over it. If anything ever happens, move the tape, pop the camera out, pop another one in at the field, and you're good to go. Um, so with that in place now, we can actually get to running a channel. I'm going to channel in and run a channel all the way around and a little pocket. So we'll run a channel all the way around inside of the battery cavity so that the battery doesn't hit any wiring. And then we'll make a little pocket and pocket through into our compartment where we'll connect our camera. So I've already made up the camera harness. So this is going to go, give you an idea. It's going to go inside. We're going to wind it around the battery bay. And then we're going to go inside. So it's going to essentially be like this, but we'll put it in so it's really, really nice and neat. You won't even really be able to see it once it's inside. So in order to do that, I use a little hot knife technique. So I take a, some old control rod material and I just make a straight one and I make a 90 degree angle one. That way I can actually, I'm going to heat these up using a heat gun and then I can just press into the foam and it will melt into the foam right through the laminate right into the foam and make a nice neat little channel that goes all the way around so I'll be doing this all the way around to get that channel in there and then once that's in we just embed our wire all the way around inside of that and it comes out really clean stays in place doesn't interfere with your battery or anything um, and it minimizes any ability for any damage to happen. It works very, very good. So the first hole we're going to make, the first one we're going to make 
is going to be from where our camera wires will go in and we're going in at a little bit of an angle and just burning through so we get inside of our bay and I'm going in at an angle you can see the angle that I'm at till I come through on the other side so now I just need to make that a little bit bigger because I'm going to need to fit the wires through so let's heat this up some more and I'm going to get it nice and hot so I can move it around inside of there and make that hole, you know, a pretty good size that I can fit all the wires and the connector pieces through there. So, see, I just move it around in a circle like this. Don't be afraid of making it too big. That's not going to hurt anything. All right. So once we have that part, now we'll use the, the right angle one and we'll work our way around and we can see where we came out down there. We'll just work our way around, all the way around at that same height, the whole way around. Just going to press in and make a nice little channel in there. You might, you're going to have to go several times, so let's just... Keep heating it and working it around. All right, so we need to make a little pocket to go through to the other side. I'm just going to heat this up and use this to make our little pocket. And it'll actually make a nice melted little pass through. Good. And we'll make our last run over into the other side. Okay. With that all done, I'm going to leave this out for now, but make a little room for myself but now let me just take the servo connector off so I can get it through these this particular hole here and then I'm just gonna wrap these a little and I'm gonna stick them through our little channel here all the way through so they come out the other side. All right, so there's our channel through. Now I can put the connector back on. So with these in the proper orientation, it should be yellow, yellow, red, and black. And we'll put our connector back on. All right, with our connector back on, now we can run it through to the other side. Bring it out. All right, we'll connect up to our camera. And I like to leave just a little bit of a stress relief. So I make a little loop around. Plug it into our camera. That's all good to go. Now all I do is just run this cable and press it inside our channel all the way around. And I can actually use my little thing that I was burning with to actually seat it in there as far in as it'll go. Just walk it all the way around just like that. Now, as you can see, you can't even see the wire in there. It's in there nice and neat the whole way around. So our battery pocket has no interference from anything. That's a really nice, neat little deal there. Just done with a hot wire. 
So now we'll pick up our wire on the inside, make sure it's out of the way, and we'll put the rest of our electronics back into the bay. And as you can see, this whole thing can come out. I left everything free so you can move it around. And with the hatch over top, you're never going to run into anything. Nothing's ever going to come in and hit that. Put all our stuff back in place. And we're good to go. All right, so at this point, let me go ahead and connect our battery, our camera. And as you can see, I made the VTX one a female, and I made the camera one a male. These are on the ROSD. So on the camera line for the camera, I know I'm not going to mix up which one is VTX and which one's camera because I've put two different type of connectors for each one. So our camera gun goes here and our camera's connected and we can just lay this inside of our pocket and that'll lay in there nice and flat. And all this is done so that you can quick disconnect if you need to change anything or troubleshoot wiring it's all connectorized nice and neat all right so our camera's in now all we need to do is go in and connect our vtx the vtx we're using is a team black sheep unify pro race edition so this will do 25 milliamp or 25 milliwatt and 200 milliwatt and it has pit mode um, i deactivate the pit mode i want it to be active as soon as i plug in but here's our with a little pigtail this is going to drop right in place just like this and into our pocket so the only thing i need to do is actually just cut in a little channel for our antenna that we're going to put in and we're not going to be using this one. We're actually going to be using a uh, Video Aerial Systems race spec antenna. And we'll just, we'll just cut a channel for all of this. And it'll just be able to press right in. Um, and I can see kind of where my spars are. So I don't want to butt up against a spar. But they intersect from like right here, right here from here to here. So I'm actually gonna run this around and run our antenna so it comes out somewhere out here, which is actually really good because it keeps us away from our receiver. Our receiver is gonna be on one side and VTX will be out here on the other side. Um, so we shouldn't have any interference or any noise issues. Um, I'm actually gonna just take the X-Acto and freehand this but I want to come somewhere out into this area. All right, so this will sit down inside of our channel, just like that. And when we get our antenna on, we'll just drop that in there too, and it'll stick out. And we'll have a nice little antenna here, a little stubby. I highly recommend the uh, VAS uh, race spec. It fits in here really nice. Um, so let's go ahead and go inside and connect up our VTX. And now... See, that sits in there nice and neat. Actually, let's make it a little tighter. So there, there's all of our electronics. Nice and neat inside of our pocket. We have our VTX, we have our ROSD. You can easily see VTX and cameras, which, you know, our connectors are there. We have open air for our VTX so that there's airflow over it to keep it cool. Our receiver's over here. Motors installed, and we're using a Cobra 2217-2300 kV with a collet spinner for mounting our prop. Run cam, 
My, uh, this is the Runcam Mini, and I choose a 2.3 or 2.1 lens for this camera. Um, the bigger, probably the bigger the better, but this is the one that I, this has a 2.1 on it right now. Uh, so our entire equipment bay is done. And see how nice that fits in there? Everything fits nice and flush. Clips in there nice and neat. Maintained all of our graphic. So the only things you see are the battery and the VTX. Everything else has got our wrap and looks fantastic. So I want to show you the last step we're going to do, and that's going to be to put this connector on. And like I had mentioned earlier, I'm a little anal about this. So I want to make this as clean so the wires stay laying down flat. Um, the battery that I choose for this aircraft is a Tattoo 3700 4S. It's only about 45C. It's a 45C battery. I uh, wish it was a little higher C, but um, this is the only one that they make, and the size is what we're looking for. This size is perfect for the pocket. It placed where I have it placed, the CG will be really, really like spot on for CG. Uh, so this battery works fantastic. You'll get with this motor, you'll get anywhere from four and a half, five minutes of full wide open throttle to anywhere upwards of 10 to 12 minutes in easy, smooth flying. So uh, really, really good battery. The only other size that you might be able to get from other manufacturers is a 3300 instead. Uh, so you'll get a little extra capacity out of this battery. Okay, I made this pocket pretty tight. So there's going to be a process in which we put this battery in. And I'm going to hold the, the balance connector out of the way. And I'm going to press this side all the way in. And now I'm pressing. And the battery will drop in just like that. So it's a tight press fit, but that's good for us because just with a little bit of Velcro on the bottom, this battery will never come out of this aircraft, no matter what you do, even right now without Velcro. It's not coming out. And as you can see, it only sticks up the slightest bit. So some, ba some other batteries might be taller. This one actually has a very low profile, so it maintains the profile of our wing and fits in there really nice. And our CG being somewhere right around where my spars are, you can see it's actually just a little bit nose heavy, and that's just what we want. It's just a little bit of nose heavy. Now, I'll mark where the actual CG is. Um, but for right now, we're just, and, and that CG mark, typically, uh, I know for this particular wing, it's six and three quarters inches back from where our blunt nose is. The blunt edge, six and three quarters back is where our CG point should be. And with that, you should be right on or just a little bit nose heavy like this is now mind you we still need to put the winglets on so that'll add a little bit more tail weight but it's going to be minimal but right now this is really really perfect and this wing is very light so thin light really good for racing really good for for just streamline freestyle um it's going to be great so with the battery wires in place I want to try to keep these down and not up flapping in the wind. They're being held over here, but what I can do is when I, I'm going to measure so that when I have a connector on here, trying not to touch anything, but when I have a connector on here, it's going to connect up and all of this is going to lay flat just like this on here. So I need to mark this and cut it and when I solder it on I'm soldering it so that there's no tension that'll make this want to on this side make this want to roll like this or like that it'll just lay flat against the airframe so let me mark that so our last step is going to be gluing on our winglets earlier on I had marked them for our center line and sanded them and prepped them so that they'll be able to glue on um, we're just going to go and do my basic little step of we're going to glue it, move it around, 
take it off and let it sit for about 15 minutes. So I've already taken a sanding block. You want to do this beforehand because the foam's going to have that hard finish to it. Take a sanding block and just give it a nice sand and keep it square to whatever the edge was there. Makes the foam nice and smooth and makes it kind of softish. So the glue's going to stick to it really well. So I just give it a little sand with the sanding block and we're good to go. So now I'm going to add a pretty good amount of glue. We'll take our winglet and line by lining it up, sometimes it's best to do this. I'm going to line it up center line with the tip and then I'm going to look at our trailing edge here and get an idea of the center point on this trailing edge. That's where we're going to line this up. All right, so there's our front. And we're going to line up the rear. We're going to press down a little, get it on there. And I'm just going to work it around a little, spread that glue around pre while pressing in. Just spread it around a little. So just move it a little bit about where, away from where you had it. And then I'm just going to take this apart. Catch those stringers. And I'm just going to leave that sit for about 15 minutes. Now, carefully, I can do the other side. So let's go and add our glue to the other side. Again, give it a good amount of glue. Then use our popsicle stick just to spread it around. Get a nice even coat. All right. And again, let's pull this out of the way. And we'll set this for where we want in the front and where we want it in the back. and just move it about in the area where you're going to finally place it, pressing in, move that glue around, separate it, catch those stringers, and then just set it to the side. So we're going to leave everything like this for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll stick them on there and they'll be in their final resting spot for good. All right, so we've let our winglet sit for a little while. Let that glue get really nice and tacky. So now we're going to put our winglet on. And again, we're going to orientate it so that we catch. And I need to kind of make sure I get this right. I don't want to have to do any readjustments. So we're going to get just the tip of it on here, right up near the front. And then we're going to look at the back and catch the middle of our cord right on the line. Right? Right in the middle of our elevon. So you can kind of see that right there. And with that in place, we can actually press it on now. And I'm just gonna keep it in place and press it. And now that winglet is on there. Once this glue dries, I will sometimes run a bead of welders. Just take our bead and run a bead of welders around it. And on the bottom, run a bead of welders around it. Let it dry and that thing's never coming off of there. The only way it's coming off is if you're breaking the foam. All right, so let's put our other one on. And again, We'll line up our front edge. Let's get that on there. And then find our, use our line to find the cord at the back. Now we 
got our second winglet on. Just press it into place. Okay, uh, we need to mark the CG on the bottom of the wing so that we can easily find that measurement um, when we're at the field or trying in anything like new batteries or something like that. So the way that I do it is I know that our CG point from the blunt nose is going to be six and three quarters back from the tip of the of the nose. So I'm going to six and three quarters. I'm going to mark it there. And I'm going to try to grab another spot. Six and three quarters. Let's go on this side. Six and three quarters. Six and three quarters. I've marked it in a couple of spots here lightly, but I'm going to make two different sets of marks. Using a straight edge, I'm going to mark these well. And these are going to be our marks inboard. But what I also do is I go all the way out to near the wingtips. And the reason why I do this is so that I can hold the wing. I'll show you when I'm when I after I mark these, but I can hold the wing out near the tips here. And it helps me hold the wing better right side up. And I'll show you in just a second once I mark these. Around. And I go about an inch in, an inch in or so from the wing tip and I mark these again. Okay. I just make a little mark. All right. So that's our CG point for the wing. Now, just so I don't lose those marks, they get rubbed off or something. You can do a couple of things. Sometimes I'll just take a short little screw, like a three millimeter um, pan head screw, and I will sink those in there with a little glue. Or I'll just take a piece of tape and just put a little piece of tape over top of these marks just so I have something in place so they don't rub off. A little piece of tape. Okay, so now with our winglets in place, got our control rods on, all of our electronics are in and tucked in nice and neat. Our prop is installed. Have our graphic top and bottom. Looks fantastic. Feels great. Our villain is all done and ready to fly. We're ready to maiden it. So we'll pick up from the field and we will let you see how the maiden goes. This will be the maiden launch for the villain with the uh, nice wrap on it. So uh, I've done all the radio setup, transferred everything over to his, uh, to Nick's radio. So we're ready to go and we're gonna do a little launch and trim, get it all set up and check the rates and then we'll be ready to race. Right. Coming up on throttle. Good. Yep. Give a little trim, it seems a, it's nose heavy. I mean, it's not, 
Telemetry lost. All right, so it's Telemetry pretty good now. Recovered. I'm gonna bring the throttle back. Need to trim it a little, nose down. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. It's very quick, yes. But I'm doing just line of sight. I know, but you don't run. Oh, looks pretty good. Telemetry it's a little, lost. Telemetry recovered. Don't like the radio doing that, but. All right, it's flying pretty good. Seems a little touchy. It's quick. It's a little pitchy, but it's actually pretty nice. We'll just Telemetry tune in a little lost. expo. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. All right, we're okay. good. So, got its maiden launch. Everything went very, very nice. Gave a little bit of trim. Going to do a little radio tuning to get a little expo in it, make it a little less pitchy. Um, but it flew perfect. Uh, it's actually going to be very, very good to race. So, we're good to go. It was a perfect, perfect maiden.